Coming up on the hot seat, history was made this weekend on the diamond. Find out what made Jared Coche's no-hitter one of the most historic days in LSU baseball history. Plus, see how Coche was honored by his hometown. And Anthony Davis may have been the All-Star Game MVP, but find out who really stole the show at All-Star Weekend. Don't go anywhere. The hot seat starts right now. Hey guys, and welcome to the hot seat. I'm Sydney Roberts. And I'm Reggie Chapman. Now, before we start the show, we have some unfortunate news to tell you guys. Last night, Steve Butchery, the director of student media here at LSU, passed away from pa pancreatic cancer. He was known for being very positive and open in his life. He was a huge part of everything that goes on in LSU student media, and he'll be dearly missed. Yes, our condolences to his family. He was definitely a great one to work with. Now, on a lighter note, the gymnastics team took on George Washington and Iowa University Sunday, looking to rebound from a disappointing loss to Oklahoma on Friday. The Tigers put, put on one of their best performances yet, winning the meet with a score of a 197-975. This win marks the 16th straight meet where the Tigers have scored a 197 or better. It is also their 26th straight win in the PMAC. They haven't lost at home since 2014. Well, baseball finally came back this weekend. After their home opener got postponed on Friday, the Tigers prepared for a doubleheader on Saturday. But no one could prepare senior Jared Poche for the history he was set to make. Tiger TV sports reporter Dylan Alvarez has more. Surreal. Man, I, I still can't believe it happened. On Saturday, senior Jared Poche took to the mound for his first start of the season, and he did something no Tigers done since 1979. He threw a no-hitter. crazy thing is, um, man, my dad said, hey, walk on yesterday. He's, um, he's like, you can throw a no-hitter. I was like, why are you, like, you know, why are you saying that? You know, putting, putting that on me, and I was, you know, expecting to get, you know, hit all around the ballpark today, and the next thing you know what happened. That's, that's crazy the way things work. This was Poche's last opening day as a Tiger, and it couldn't have gone much better. I guess I went out with a bang. So. Yeah, it was a special day. I just asked him out there on the mound when I hugged him. I said, well, was it worth coming back to experience that today? And he said, absolutely. But Poche wasn't alone out there. Kramer Robinson came up with some great plays throughout the game. They kept Poche's no-hitter alive. I think the top of the seventh inning was as nervous as I've ever been as a baseball player for, for Poche. I, I wanted him to get it so bad. Tonight, Jared Poche made LSU history. His no-hitter was the first in nearly 40 years for the Tigers. And, as you can tell, the players were pretty hyped up about it. Oh. I, mean, I, you know, I kind of felt awkward. I was like, man, I like to talk to people. Ah. <laughs> During the game. <laughs> that tastes terrible. <laughs> Poche's no-hitter also marked LSU's 25th 100th win. Reporting for Tiger TV Sports, I'm Dylan Alvarez. The Tigers also won their other game on Saturday. Now on Sunday, they sent freshman Eric Walker to the mound against Air Force in his first ever start. He's right on track. The freshman only gave up one run on two hits in five innings of work. The offense exploded in the game, scoring 10 runs, including sixth in the fourth inning. LSU went on to defeat Air Force 10-3. The Tigers will be back on the diamond on Tuesday when they go on the road to face off against the University of New Orleans. The men had a field day on the mound this weekend, Sydney. But they weren't the only ones getting it done out there. LSU's softball team hosted the Purple and Gold Challenge this weekend and had a little fun of their own. LSU started slow behind the plate, but after getting on the board in the fourth inning, they took that momentum and finished with a 9-2 win. I like how we finished here tonight. I thought we did a good job of fighting back. I thought they never panicked. I like that they got on the board finally by being productive with their at-bats. You know, a couple of big hits, Emily and Bailey, were great, you know, all night. But, you know, I like that we were able to squeeze to get the first run. I like, you know, that we were able to, to have some productive moments. A sack fly scores a second run. That's really the ones that tie it up. So I like seeing them have productive at-bats, make a productive out. thought that was a positive. And then stepping up and, and 
taking some big swings when we needed it. I think we are growing as a team, definitely. Uh, we're working on things in the games. We're making adjustments, and we're, um, you know, we're not doing the same thing throughout the whole entire game. We're, we're making changes and doing better towards the end of the games. I think the last two home runs, I know they came with two strikes. I, my mentality was just, you know, try and find something to hit hard, you know, stay alive, and it worked out. Carly Hoover was back on the mound for Game 2 yesterday following her no-hitter against Louisiana Tech on Wednesday. Once again, Hoover was dominant and shut out Central Arkansas 2-0. to zero. Hoover only allowed the Bears to muster one hit and recorded 10 strikeouts. On the other side of the plate, LSU couldn't get the same momentum up they did against Central Arkansas on Saturday, but got the two runs they needed to take the win. Well, still to come, see the special way Coach Ed Orgeron was honored by his hometown. And find out... How one New Orleans sports fanatic stole the show during NBA's All-Star Weekend. Don't go anywhere. The hot seat is right back after this. Well, if you travel about three hours south of Baton Rouge and stop just before the Gulf of Mexico, you'll find La Rose, Louisiana, also known as the hometown of LSU football head coach Ed Ogeron. Coach O's alma mater, South Lafouche High School, honored his success, his success on Friday night. Around 1,000 Tiger faithful gathered at the La Rose Civic Center Friday night to honor Coach Ed Ogeron and retire his South Lafouche football jersey. During the ceremony, Coach O caught up with old friends and showed nothing but love for his hometown. I want to thank God for being, being born in La Rose, Louisiana. I couldn't have been born in a better place. Coach O also talked about dreaming of coaching in Tiger Stadium. And I pass, I pass over the bridge like we've done many times in the head. And this, here's how I'm proud. Oh, to be in that stadium. I come back. I want to be in that stadium. My cleats had to be in that grass. I have unfinished business. Down in South Lafouche, Coach O is more well known as Bebe. One of Bebe's best friends, former Saints quarterback Bobby Abair. Hey, who that is? Reminisce on growing up around Cocho and his family. I look at his mom, Mr. Cocho. Mr. Bebe, his dad. I look at Mr. Magnus Arsenal, his glory and fury. All of a sudden, you had to submit so much to me in my life. Both Coach O and Bobby Abair were on the same high school football team that won state in 1977. That team was honored at the ceremony as well, marking the 40th anniversary of the championship. I want to thank all my teammates, man. It's great to see you guys. Love you. Love you. One team, one heartbeat. LSU Athletic Director Joe Oliva talked about Coach O's contagious energy. The energy and enthusiasm that he brings to the program, I can see now where he gets it from. Proceeds from the ticket sales will be donated to a local nonprofit organization. For Tiger TV Sports, I'm Madeline Evans. Well, guys, it was truly a Cajun night. Coach O requested that, that the dinner menu consists of gumbo, white beans and rice, jambalaya, fried shrimp, and bread pudding. Oh. Louisiana football greats like Billy Cannon, LSU's only Heisman winner, former LSU and NFL linebacker Eric Hill, and NFL analyst Mike Dettelier were all in attendance to congratulate our coach. And he most definitely deserved it all. Well, still to come... Find out which little man stole the show at NBA All-Star Weekend. The hot seat is right back after this. Well, if you're a Saints fan, you probably know his name. Jarius Robertson is an electrifying 13-year-old that is barely tall enough to reach your waist. Robertson suffers from a chronic liver disease, but that doesn't stop him from being an avid New Orleans sports fan. My man Jerry has stepped on the court for the Celebrity All-Star Game this past weekend. He takes the ball, and we'll show it to you here he makes a couple of nice moves and gets the shot to go. Just straight up embarrassing people, man. Jarius Robertson, an absolute stud. And uh, wow, keep it up, Jarius. Anyway, before we leave you guys tonight, we want to pay a special tribute to Steve Buttry. Despite battling cancer, he still showed up to work every day, and his outlook was always positive no matter what he had to overcome. This interview was held two weeks ago and reflects just the kind of man he was. You know, I'm not going to tell you, I don't have days when I feel feel glum and the, and the smile is a little more forced than others but uh, I've lived a really good life and you know if this is the end of it uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out happy